In today's English lesson, you are going to learn about my favorite subject, which is food. I hope it is one of your favorite subjects. And we are going to talk all about foods that begin with W. I'm at my school right now. I'm not sure if I will record the whole English lesson here, but I do want to show you this incredible sunrise. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the first people to get to my school. I like getting here early. And sometimes the sunrise just makes that worth everything, getting out of bed so early. And guess what? I did not come up with any of these W foods. You did. I asked on social media, what are some of your favorite foods in English that start with W? And you came through. I got a bunch of answers. I didn't even know we had this many foods that started with W in English. Let's talk about the first food that starts with W. Thank you, Denise and Mahmood. You both said watermelon. There are a couple parts of the watermelon that I would like to talk about. So, of course, it is a fruit, and when it is ripe, the outside is green. You don't eat that part. And that part we call the rind in English, R-I-N-D. The part you eat, we could call the meat or the flesh, you know, that, that pink part. And sometimes you can get what we call seedless watermelon. Now, they do have seeds, they're little white things, but they're not like the black seeds that you really can't eat in a regular watermelon. I don't know about you, watermelon is not my favorite fruit, but on a hot summer day, I don't think there is anything better to eat than watermelon. Okay, this next food that starts with W might not sound like it's English because it comes from the German, but the next food, I'm a little nervous about pronouncing this, but in English, we say Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. It is a type of meat, it's a type of beef, but it's special because it comes from young cows. We call those young cows calves. And instead of beef, the meat from young cows is called veal. So you take a piece of veal and then you coat it with breadcrumbs and then you deep fry it in oil and then it becomes Wiener Schnitzel. Now, it's not German. It actually comes from the country of Austria. And I'm told that Wiener Schnitzel actually means Vienna cutlet. A cutlet is a, a type of meat. It's a, a cut of meat. And Vienna, just in case you don't know, is the capital of Austria. Thank you, Tanya, for providing that very complicated W word for me to say, but it is super important. I will try it in German. Wiener Schnitzel. Please, if you speak German, Tanya, tell me, how bad was that? And depending on your first language, I think that W sound is quite hard to make. I hear some people who are non-native English speakers use the sound as more like a, a V. So that's why Wiener Schnitzel might sound like Wiener Schnitzel in the original German. I'm not sure how many languages have that W sound, that wah, wah. Hey, we are outside now. It's a beautiful day, but if you are enjoying this English lesson, would you mind hitting that like button? And if it's your first time here, please subscribe so you never miss another English lesson. Sorry about the banging in the background. My neighbor is doing something, but the next W word I would like to talk about are wings. And thank you, Omron, for mentioning it. Uh, wings are often called chicken wings or buffalo wings. We'll talk about what the buffalo means in just a minute. But you can imagine these wings do come from chickens and there are usually two parts to them. One, it's called the flat part, 
and one is called the drumlet. And the great thing about chicken wings is that you can get them in a lot of different flavors and you can get them in a lot of different levels of spiciness. You could get mild, which means they're not spicy at all. You could get medium, which is what it sounds like, kind of in the middle, then you can get hot. I prefer the medium ones, right in the middle. But you might also hear buffalo wings. Now, in English, you might know the animal buffalo. Buffalo wings have nothing to do with that animal. They are still from chickens, these wings, but buffalo means they're spicy. And they originally came from this city in the United States called Buffalo, New York. I actually visited Buffalo, New York this summer. At the end of this lesson, I will leave a link to one of the English lessons I made there. Sabka is next, and she mentions two words that start with W, walnuts, and whole wheat bread. Walnuts are exactly what they sound like. They are a type of nut, they grow on a tree, they have a hard outer shell. You might need a nutcracker to open these, and guess what? They taste great in banana walnut bread. Yeah, bananas and walnuts, for some reason, pair really well together. When I hear whole wheat bread, I think a very healthy type of bread. Not like the white bread, which also starts with a W. No, whole grain bread has a little different taste. Maybe not as good of a taste, in my opinion, but it is healthier for you. It's supposed to be a little more natural. Maybe a little less sugar. Yeah, in the United States, we put sugar in just about everything, including our bread. I'm sure it's not very healthy. Diego mentioned waffles. And I think waffles are a very versatile food. What does versatile mean? It means you can do a lot of things with it. Waffles can be sweet or they can be savory, which is the opposite of sweet. You can have them for breakfast, you can have them for lunch, you can even have them for dinner. You probably need a waffle iron to make waffles, and I like my waffles with butter and maple syrup. We talked about maple syrup before when we talked about foods that started with M in English. We just talked about bananas when we talked about walnuts, but I would like to talk about bananas again when we talk about waffles. I love waffles topped with bananas, maybe some Nutella, maybe some peanut butter. But if you want a savory waffle, you could top it with eggs, cheese, maybe some kind of meat. Yeah, waffles are a very versatile food. Up next is Mode, and he mentioned weed. Now, I'm not sure what he meant by that. If he meant just weed, I probably shouldn't talk about it. That kind of stuff is illegal in many parts of the world. It's not illegal where I live, but many parts of the world it is. You will have to look that up for yourself. But he might have had a typo there, and maybe he meant weeds. That doesn't make sense either, because weeds are the things that grow in gardens that you don't want. A lot of people pull weeds to try to save the other things in the garden that they like. I don't know, Mode. I'm very confused. Let's move on to the next W food. Up next is somebody you might know, and if you don't know him, maybe you should know him, but it's Teacher Mike. He's a great English teacher. I'll leave his links in the description if you would like to follow another English teacher. He does good stuff. He mentioned wontons and white fish. Let's talk about white fish first. It's exactly what it sounds like. Fish where the meat is white. So the type of fish that might be considered white fish would be cod, would be haddock. A fish that's not white fish is something called salmon. 
because the meat of that fish is pink. Now, wontons come from China. They are a little hard to describe. Luckily, I can put a picture of what wontons look like, but they have this thin kind of bready outer shell. They're shaped into a square, and inside you can put pretty much anything you want. Chicken, shrimp, uh, I don't know if you eat beef or pork, but those two meats could go in there and pretty much any vegetable you can think of. You could call wontons another versatile food, and they can also be either boiled or steamed or fried. And Sidra mentioned one of my favorite things. I never would have thought of this, but it's called walking taco casserole. Let's talk about casserole first. In English, that just means a whole bunch of things were dumped into a dish and probably baked. But the walking tacos thing is interesting. This is how my family makes walking tacos. So it's usually Jamie, my wife. She will brown up some meat and then you make like tacos with the traditional things, lettuce, cheese, sour cream. And then you get a little bag of Doritos. You crush up the Doritos and then you pour all of the taco stuff inside. So basically you have a taco like thing that you can eat with a fork or a spoon and walk around with it. It's such a super easy meal. If you are going to have people over maybe to watch a sporting event, good stuff. Lorena mentioned something that I'd never heard of. They were wonder berries. So I had to do a little research. Well, if you heard what they are, they're berries. So maybe you know what a berry is. Well, these things grow just like strawberries or raspberries. When they are ripe, they're like dark purple. But when they're unripe, they're green. And guess what? If you eat wonder berries before they are ripe, they are toxic. Do you know what toxic means? It means it could kill you. So you need to be very careful when you're picking Wonder Berries. If they're purple, good to go. If they're green, just keep them there. You don't want to die. And just like other berries, Wonder Berries will make their way into pies, jellies, jams. I don't know if I am brave enough to try Wonder Berries. I want to thank you. I hope your English is a little bit better now that you've watched this English lesson. If you're looking for more foods, right up there is a playlist with G and M. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.